Are you trying to go from creator to course instructor? Today I'm going to show you how I made this jump from making videos here on YouTube to actually selling online courses. My name is Jen, if we haven't met before. And not only am I a creator here on YouTube, I actually own my own business. And during the pandemic, when that business was shut down, I started making online courses to try to keep us afloat. It worked so well that years later, I'm still creating online courses. I'm about to start working on my next two courses. So today I'm going to show you my best practices for creating an online course and selling it and making it super profitable. Let's just get into it. The first step is to get ideas about what would make a great course for you to create. So look at the analytics on the free content you're already putting out into the world, whether that's here on YouTube or on a blog and see what content, what topics really get the most views. That tells you what the appetite is for that kind of information. And so look at what you've already created and think about how you can expand upon that. Also look at the comments in your videos or on your blog and see what questions do people have that you could answer in an online course. That's a great place to start to really get an idea for a course. By identifying your best performing content, you're going to learn how people see you online and where they think your area of expertise lies. It might differ a little bit from what you think it is. So when you look at that best performing content, you're going to see where the appetite is for more information and you're going to have to figure out how you can expand on that free content you've already put into the world for that paid course. All right. The next step is to pick your platform. In my case, I chose Thinkific for a number of reasons, and I will link to Thinkific down below so you can check it out. But one of the things I really liked about Thinkific is that they have a free version where you can launch a course for free on their platform. And if you've never made a course before and you're not sure how it's going to go, this is so great because there's not as much skin in the game at the beginning. It's really just an investment in your time in creating the course. They also have a drag and drop course builder so you can look super professional. Your course can also be in video format as mine all are on Thinkific. And you can also upload supplemental materials that your users can download as part of the curriculum. Thinkific is very robust in terms of building the course. So that's another reason I like it. They also handle like all the payments and stuff like that as well. And they make it really easy for you as a course creator. If you look at Thinkific and you don't like it, there are a lot of other options out there as well, like Kajabi or Udemy. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but there's a lot of other course hosting platforms out there if you're not crazy about Thinkific. All right, let's move on to step number three, which is choosing your course format. So you have to think about like the medium that your course is going to be, whether it be like text and pictures or actual video or just screen recording with you talking over it and you're never on camera. You probably already know based on the content you're already creating, what is going to be the best fit for you. Um, but there's more to think about as well. You could make a course that is self-paced, meaning that the students take the course at their leisure, or you could have cohort-based courses where students are taking them in groups together, almost like a college class, or you could even do like a live webinar. Thinkific supports all of these formats, but there's pros and cons to all of them. In terms of the self-paced courses, which is what I do, I really like that because I create the course once and then I just sit back and wait for people to enroll and it truly becomes passive income. The cons to the self-paced course are that if the information changes, it's harder to update. Like, so for instance, for me, I do software tutorials and when the software maker makes a change to the software, it's a pain for me to go back and recreate a video to update that course. So that's something definitely to think about. You're definitely less nimble when you do one of these pre-made self-paced courses. The other thing is that because people can enroll at any time, they might procrastinate in enrolling and there's not much of a sense of urgency to get them to purchase the course. So those are some cons in terms of the cohort based courses or the live webinars. The cons are that you're actively teaching the course all the time, right? So it's not really really passive income. But the pro could be that you're saying, okay, we're starting this course, you know, August 1st, you better enroll now. So there's urgency. And so you can better predict when people are going to be signing up and enrolling in the course and better predicting your income. So these are all things you should be thinking about. All right. The next step to building a super successful online course is to create your course outline. 
This is the actual outline I created for my course, Final Cut Rockstar. You can see that I broke everything up into digestible modules that make sense and build on themselves module by module by module. So the students feel like they're getting a very base level understanding in the earlier modules, and then we get more advanced as they go. This outline will become the basis of your entire course. So really take your time with it. It might take you even a few days to go back and keep adding things and adding things, maybe reordering, but you wanna make sure that you have everything in a flow that really makes sense from the learner experience. Okay, let's talk about your next step, which is kind of the fun one. It's time to come up with the branding for your course. So you're gonna to wanna to come up with like a snappy name. So my course names are like Final Cut Rockstar, Motion Launchpad, Agency Kickstart. You'll also wanna consider having a designer create a logo for your course to keep it really branded. I had a Fiverr designer create my Motion Launchpad logo that I really love. I'll link to that down below so you can find that creator as well. All right, the next step is to create all of your content based on your outline. So for me, that meant making videos for every single module that I created in this Final Cut Rockstar outline. For you, if you're doing a text course, maybe you want to design all of the pages in a platform like Canva, and then you can just drag and drop them into Thinkific and sprinkle in some of Thinkific's other bells and whistles like quizzes and things like that as well. It's gonna help your course a lot if it's visually impactful. So even if you don't have a ton of design experience, a tool like Canva can really help you make something that looks really sharp and complements the very valuable information you're gonna be giving in your course. The next step, of course, is to promote, promote, promote your courses. I have spent zero dollars promoting my courses online. I do it totally organically through my YouTube channel and other social media accounts. So this is my strategy strategy. While you're creating your course, you can actually post updates about how it's going to get people excited about it. When your course is ready to launch, post dedicated content promoting that course, let people know it's live or available for presale. And remember at the beginning of this video when I said to look at your free content that performs really well, you're going to do that again. Make more of that free content that relates to your course and then promote your course in the middle of it for people who want to learn more and keep doing that. Don't just do that once, do it periodically because there's always going to be new eyeballs on your content and a new reason for you to promote that existing course. Another tip for that existing free content that you already put out there before you created your course is to go back and pin comments to that content promoting your course. You can also add cards to your videos promoting that course as well. Make sure you promote this course loud and proud across all of your social media platforms. So those are my steps for creating an online course, but I do have a few extra really helpful tips for you. Before I get to those though, do that YouTube thing. If you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, my first extra tip for you is to be really thoughtful about your pricing strategy. What I have found in my experience is that students have a lower threshold for what they're willing to pay for an online course than I expected when I first started running my courses online. Even though I know the information I'm giving is super valuable and they can use that to make tons of money in real life and you know the information you're giving is super valuable, a lot of the times the students aren't willing to pay a super high price for an online course. So I would recommend that you do a strategy where you're aiming more for volume, a lower price, but enrolling a lot more students as opposed to a very high exclusive price that only a few people are willing to pay or can afford. That's just my tip for you. Another tip is that you probably want to accept PayPal. I found when I first started running my first online course, a lot of people were looking for PayPal and they, for whatever reason, didn't want to buy my course unless they could do it through PayPal because of maybe they're in a different country or something. So I would definitely recommend taking PayPal payments. And the last tip I have for you is if your first course goes well and you think you're going to be making more in the future, you may want to invest in a dedicated website that you have a lot more creative control over the way it looks as opposed to like the base page on 
Thinkific. So this is what the jenjager.com website looks like. You know, I sell merch here. I have a calendar of events where I'm going to be speaking. And of course, I'm showcasing all of those courses. So I would definitely recommend investing in your own web page if you think you're going to be a long term course creator. I wish you great success in your online course. Making online courses has completely changed my life. If you have an idea for a course, let us all know what is that idea down in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love and I'll see you again.